let's start our discussion here, folks, once again about objectives. All right? Objectives. What are our objectives, do you think, for proteins? Who can give me one? What do you think we're going to need to know about proteins? Jamie? Huh? Once again, the monomers. Okay? We're going to need to know the monomer of a protein. Basically, the building blocks. What else? Brandon? Examples. We're going to need to be able to, to describe some examples of proteins. This picture up here has some good ones. Nice big steak. I had a nice steak last night. It was really good. Got some proteins in there. Peanuts. Peanuts are a high source of proteins there. I see some vegetables, a fish, walnuts, some of these seeds down here, beans. Okay, so some examples of proteins. What else? Fletcher? How proteins are used specifically by us, our body. How our body uses the proteins. Okay, so those are some objectives. Probably we know monomers make polymers, so we're probably going to learn about a polymer that protein makes. Okay, we're going to know of the polymers. Okay, the protein polymers. So let's start off with proteins. C-H-O-N. Chone. Chone. C-H-O-N. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen are the elements that make up proteins. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. The monomer of proteins are substances that we call amino acids. You ever heard of an amino acid? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? We are going to end up later on in the year. Later on in the year, when we talk about protein synthesis, we will actually be building proteins from the monomers and how the entire process goes in your body. So basically, it's something we call the central dogma, which you'll learn a lot about later on. The central dogma, how DNA, okay, DNA is translated into RNA, and then the RNA transcribes the protein at the ribosome, okay? So where are proteins? We don't have that listed here yet, but let's turn it back to the ribosomes, okay? Let's turn back to the ribosomes. Find ribosomes, would you, in your book under the cells? So we got ribosomes. Do you find them? What does it say about ribosomes in our book? Okay. What is their function? To do what, Sydney? Make proteins. So ribosomes make proteins. So like I said, at the ribosome, the RNA is red. Okay. The RNA, I think I said it wrong. I said translated for the first one. The RNA is translated at the ribosome and the monomers, the amino acids, are put together to form these proteins. To form these proteins. So the monomer of the protein is an amino acid. There are 20 amino acids and they can join together to form all different types of proteins. 
So there are 20 amino acids in our body, and they join together to form these proteins. Okay, proteins. And we call these polymers of that. I don't know if we get into that. I don't. But we call them peptides, polypeptides. Proteins can form bones and muscle. Proteins will also control the rate of reactions in our bodies with substances that we call enzymes. So the proteins control the rate of reactions in our body with substances we call enzymes. Now, we'll be doing a lab next week. I've finished the plans. We'll be doing a lab for three days next week with enzymes. Okay, so we're going to actually see how these enzymes work. Okay, they control the rates of the reactions. Sometimes they speed them up. Okay, speed up the reaction. We'll take a little more notes, I believe, on Monday about enzymes. All right. What are some examples? Meats, beans, eggs. Eggs are a excellent source of protein. Beans, peanuts, like I said before, you eat some peanut butter, it's a good protein. It's good for proteins. The steak I had last night, whew, proteins. Okay? Good proteins. Now, if you look right here, this is a picture of an amino acid. This is a picture of an amino acid. Now, with this amino acid, you can see that we have an amino group. Okay? an amino group that has nitrogens and hydrogens, we have an alpha carbon. That is the central carbon. We have a carboxyl group, which has C, double bond O, and an OH. Okay. And finally here is a hydrogen. This R right here, this R right here, the side chain, that is how the amino acids differ. Okay? That is how the amino acids differ. They all have the certain parts, but their side chain here, this R, is the different part. Look here. Okay? Here is an R group in a circle where I just said the variant. It says down here, the R group is unique to each amino acid. It is what makes it different from other amino acids. Okay. So if you look right here at the different circles, they all have different things, don't they? Those are all different R groups making different amino acids. Right here is aspartic acid, aspartic acid, lysine, tyrosine, histidine, arginine, glutamic acid. Those are six of the 20 amino acids. Okay. So how are amino acids different from each other? If you would be asked that question, what would you say, Dylan? <clears throat> they have a different R group, right? They have a different R group. <clears throat> Good. The monomer, we just talked about, the monomer for a uh, protein is an amino acid. Now, if you look here, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, these are all, see how they have different three-letter 
three letters on them. This one, V-A-L, P-R-O, L-Y-S, P-H-E, T-Y-R. Those are all abbreviations for amino acids. So what we have done here is a chain of amino acids together. So this is the making of a protein. Okay, We just continue to add monomer and monomer and monomer and monomer and we keep building and building. Okay, So it says here, think of these amino acids as like beads on a string. Which beads you put on and it, which order determines the protein. So, which beads and in which order determines the protein. So, the beads are the amino acid. The entire necklace is the protein. Now, if I were to sit out 20 different color of beads, do you see how everybody in here could make totally different necklaces, right? Could make totally different necklaces. Could I tell you or give you a procedure and you all made the same necklace? Could we do that? Okay. And that is what happens. Okay. That is what happens when we're dealing with these proteins. The order in which the amino acids go together build certain proteins, okay? Like I said, we'll talk about that process later on in the year when we get into the central dogma. Now, once again, once again, this whole thing right here, what is going on here? What's this slide showing us? What's this slide showing us? Fletcher? Say it louder. Okay, dehydration and hydrolysis. If you look, right here are two amino acids, right? In blue right here, we have an OH and an H. When we have the dehydration synthesis, the water is given off, and here we have the peptide bond. What's a peptide bond? It's a bond between amino acids. A bond between amino acids. Now, just like we had a disaccharide, this can be called a dipeptide because we have two we have two amino acids put together what would a polypeptide be what would a polypeptide be what did we say poly was yesterday and the day before huh many good many so many of these amino acids put together make a polypeptide. Two amino acids put together make a dipeptide. If I just have a amino acid, an, I guess would be the correct English, an amino acid, that would be a monomer. Okay, the monomer. So down here at the bottom, two amino acids together can be called a dipeptide. And many amino acids together we call a polypeptide. Shape of a protein. Shape of a protein determines how the protein works or even if it works. And I've shown you the four different protein protein structures, okay? Primary structure, secondary structure, ternary structure, quaternary structure, okay? We're not going to go into the structures and 
the shape of the protein very much. But I think you should know that there are four shapes, four different shapes of protein, four different structures, okay? Primary, secondary, ternary, and quaternary. I don't think that's too tough to remember. Okay, you've got them. I've put pictures of them in your notes, right? I haven't put pictures of them in your notes. Okay.